There we go. Okay, you solved that kind of proportion when you were in pre-algebra. It's one fraction equals one fraction. That's what a proportion is. And you cross multiplied. So you had 5x equals 3 times 6, which is 18. And then divided both sides by 5. But 5 won't go evenly into 18. So that would have been your answer. But now, this is a beginning algebra style proportion, a big kid proportion. But it's still one fraction equals one fraction. Okay, even though this looks like more than one, it is two terms, but the fact that you have one fraction bar makes this one thing. And the fact that you have one fraction bar makes this one thing. So sometimes it's better to go ahead and insert your own parentheses to help you remember that. Because now we're going to do to that just what we did to this. I'm going to cross multiply and what that looks like when I get it done is this times this equals this times this. Okay, and then I'm just going to solve the equation, get an answer for R. So I'll distribute, distribute. And which side you decide to get your variables on and which side you decide to get your numbers on. It's all up to you. You can still get the right answer. I'm going to subtract 10R from both sides. Okay, I've got to isolate my variable term. So I'll add 6 to both sides so I can get it to zero out over here. And then to isolate the R, I'll divide both sides by 2. And so now I'll have the 2's cancel out. That leaves me with R all by itself. 46 divided by 2 is 23. So R is going to equal 23. I just feel like I need to do this, and what if I had decided to go the other way? I just want to show you, you can still get the same answer. So let's go from here. And let's say that I just decide to subtract 12R from both sides. All right, so here I am. And instead of subtracting 10R from both sides, I'm going to subtract 12R from both sides. Okay, that zeroes out, leaving me with a minus 6 or a negative 6. Negative 6. 10R minus 12R is negative 2R. And I bring down my plus 40. And that's what I've got so far. OK. 
And so I subtract 40 from both sides. I subtract 40. That'll leave me with negative 2r here. Over here, now, you can get the wrong answer so easily if you don't do this in your calculator. Um, negative 6 minus 40 is actually going to give you negative 46. So there I am, and now the rules say divide both sides by the number in front of r. Here I've got a negative 2. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by that negative number, negative 2. I'll have r equals, the negatives cancel out. You can see it that way, or you can say to yourself, negative over negative is positive. And then 46 divided by 2 is 23, so you get the same answer, regardless of which side you decide to go on. I mean, I think that way might be a little bit easier because you don't have to deal with as many negative signs. But you get the right answer either way. So it's not like you have to worry about which side you put stuff on. I know it's, a, it's thrilling. I know, and it's hard to keep it together. OK, I need to talk with you about, about um, um, formulas, OK? Formulas that you need to have brought back into your conscious memory, because you want to kind of think with these for the rest of the time that you're in math. Can I hear a yay formulas? Mm, well, that's better than nothing. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to the very most basic kind of stuff. Rectangles. You're never going to get away from rectangles. Not even in calculus, not even after calculus. Math problems still keep coming back to rectangles, okay? And that's because doggone real life keeps coming back to rectangles. My backyard is a rectangle. Something of a wrecked rectangle because I have three dogs back there. You have to be really careful where you walk. Rectangles are these four-sided figures, and they have a longer side, and we call it the length, and they have a shorter side. Sometimes it's called the width. Most of the time it's called the width, but sometimes it's actually called the height. Okay, and rectangles, well, this side and this side are the same length. And this side and this side are the same length. So this also will be length. And this also will be width. And typically the letters we use, right? In formulas and stuff go along with those words. So L is length. And W is width. And perimeter is a fence around your property. If you have trouble remembering which is perimeter and which is area, look at the letter P and imagine the curve being taken out of it and it looks almost like an F. Kinda? Yeah. Kinda. Fence. Perimeter is. It, Perimeter and fence are exactly the same thing. So that could, that's the way I remembered it when I was in school, okay? Anyway, the perimeter really is just the length around the outside. So it would be length plus length, length plus length plus width plus width, or even length plus width plus length plus width if you're trying to figure out how much fencing you need to buy. 
okay? So the formula for perimeter is 2L plus 2W, and here's where you get the twos. It's because there are two lengths and there are two widths. And you add all these guys together and you get perimeter, but the real truth is if you're on a test, you're stuck, you suddenly can't remember P equals 2L plus 2W, it's not the worst thing in the world because you know all you have to do is add around the outside. Same thing is true for the perimeter of a triangle. The perimeter of a triangle is just, I don't know, side A plus side B plus side C. Very uncomplicated. There's not even a fancy formula. You just add around the outside. What about the Pentagon? Yeah, it's got five sides. You would just add around the outside. Fence is just adding around the outside. Perimeter is just adding around the outside. Where it gets complicated is area. Area is like carpet. It covers the inside. The area of a rectangle is length times width. And when you have two different letters next to each other, that means they're being multiplied. So it's common to hear, well, what about the other length? What about the other width? That is the formula. The way you get the area here is you say length times width, and that's it. The way you get the area here is more complicated. First, we rename everything, so I'm going to come over here. And I drew it that way just to show that I'm not talking about any special triangle, any triangle. You're going to have, you're, you're going to, have to decide on one side being the bottom, okay? So we call that the base. And then how high it is, the distance from the base up to the highest point is the height. And the formula for the area of a triangle, like if you had a triangular room for some reason, um, and you wanted to put carpet on the inside of it, that would be the area of the triangle. So you would say A equals one half B H for one half times the base, base times the height. Or if you're doing it with a calculator, you'd have 0 0.5 times the base times the height. So either one of these will give you the area of a triangle. You take the base times the height. And then take one half of it. Okay, that's also true if you have one of these really strange triangles that you see ever so often. You only see them, I think, in math books. But this down here is the base.
but you have to draw the height out here. And it goes down to where the base, well, it goes down to where the base would be if the base were extended. So this would be the height. And so the area, the area, not the perimeter, but the area would still be one half times the base times the height. And no, you don't extend the base. You, you mentally extend it because that's where the height has to stop. But you don't really, if, uh, you know, when, you, when it comes to putting in the length of the base, you would just put in from here to here, however much you're told the base is. Or if this is your very strange uh, uh, triangular room, that you're trying to figure out how much carpet do you need. So the final hand on that, would you start using the Pythagorean theorem? No, I am so glad you brought that up. I am so glad you brought that up. I am so glad you brought that up. Perimeter is the length of all three sides of any of these triangles. Okay? So the perimeter of this would be this plus this plus this. The area is one half base times height. The perimeter of this would be this length times this length times this length. The area would be one half the base times the height. Now, there's that other triangle formula that we know and love that's got nothing to do with area. Maybe if you scratch your head a lot, you could make it relate to perimeter, but nobody ever asks you about that. If you have a right triangle, so that there's a 90 degree angle here. Whoop. That's about the best I can do for a 90 degree angle. This is called a right triangle. And it's the only kind of triangle that the uh, Pythagorean theorem relates to at all. And all the Pythagorean theorem does is it tells you what the relationship is between the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. So what is the relationship between the lengths of the sides if you have a 90 degree angle here? Usually we call the vertical side A, usually. And we call the bottom side B and we call the slanted side across from the 90 degree angle C. And so the way that the lengths of the, of the sides relate is A squared plus B squared equals C squared, like that. So that's that other persnickety um, triangle formula. Triangles give us lots of formulas. Are you going to find those throughout this class? In this homework, no. Okay. But later, yes, it's going to become your best friend. But you don't find area with it. I mean, I could think of a real complicated problem where you would have to use that to find the lengths of the sides so that you could find one half base times height. But even I'm not that mean. Maybe. Maybe. Stop drinking coffee. So if we all want A's, we bring coffee? No, <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> okay, so let's backtrack and talk about what we talked about. Rectangles. The most common kind of word problem in math has to do with rectangles. Even no matter how far you go, it always comes back to rectangles. You need to know how to find the perimeter. You need to know how to find the area. Then there are triangles. You need to know how to find the perimeter. You need to know how to find the area. And yes, we will be attacked by this thing a little bit later. What about volume and all that fun stuff? Say it again. Volume and all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, but not yet. Not yet. Not 
Yeah, yeah, give, give it time, okay? So, so much for rectangles and triangles. But have you ever wondered why that would be called 90 degrees? I mean, it's one thing if it's a 90 degree day. Because of the degrees of direction, correct? Yeah. 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 When 180 degrees, you would face the opposite direction. That's right. So, it has to do with degrees. Yes, it does. I'm impressed. I told my first class today that the way to make a good grade in math, really, is to try to get into the heads of the math teachers and see the world the way they do, as terrifying as that might be. All right, And one of those ways is how we think about degrees. Because most of the time, we just measure you know, in inches or in centimeters, and then suddenly we start talking about degrees, and I wanted to show you exactly what we mean when we talk about degrees that aren't temperature degrees. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, this is. I need a volunteer or two. I need a volunteer. Come on up. All right, yeah. Now, I need one of you to take one end and one of you to take the other end. And just, just hold that. Excuse sorry. me, I'm sorry. Now, the way we imagine it, is that there are really two meter sticks there, okay, or yard sticks, whatever it might be. And all of a sudden, for no reason that anybody knows, the top one starts rotating. So the 90 degrees refers to rotation the rotation of these two things, meter sticks, yard sticks. Now, why did they start rotating? We don't deal with that. They just did. Navigation. Yeah. Sextant. Naval What? Sextant. Naval tool. Uh, yeah, exactly. OK. So this has revolved, if you will, 90 degrees. Now, if it keeps going, um, <laughs> if this keeps going, eventually it gets to look like that. So it rotated 90 degrees, and then it rotated another 90 degrees, so that the complete rotation from this side, when it wasn't doing much of anything, all the way around to this side is now 180 degrees. And so when a math person looks at a straight line, they don't say, oh, there's a straight line. They say, oh, there's 180 degrees. Because 180 degrees of rotation has taken place in order to have a straight line. Because it used to be. Over here, that it started revolving, and it's over here. And now, if it continues to revolve, it will eventually come back to where it started so that it will have gone all the way around 360 degrees. And that is the story of degrees. Thank you. It's a tough job. Someone had to do it. Yes, right. yes, and you showed true heroism. It's perilous. You deserve a medal. Okay, so we're always talking about degrees, and what we're thinking in our little heads there is there's this rotation that's going on. 
okay? Now, that helps to make it a little, maybe, a little more understandable. For instance, let's go back to a triangle. Aside from having three sides, a triangle has three angles. All right? You've got the imagined rotation that's gone on from here to here. And so that's a certain number of degrees. We could say it's A degrees, because I don't know how much it is exactly. And then we have the rotation that's gone on from here to here. And so that's a certain number of degrees. And then we have the rotation that's gone on from here to here. And that's a certain number of degrees. And one of the things you need to remember is that if you've got a triangle, there are three angles in the triangle. And those three angles, if you add them together, add up to 180 degrees. So angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. Always? Actually, no, because out in space, it's not going to be true for various reasons. It has to do with gravity, bending, bending space, and bending time, and all of that, all of that Einsteinian stuff that he discovered. But here on this planet, yeah. A plus B plus C equals 180. You should divide 180 by 3 to get the angles. Only if they were exactly equal to each other. If, let's see, 30, 60, 9, no. Um, 60, 60, and 60, yeah. Right. Yeah, if each one of these is the exact same number of degrees, then just dividing 3 into 180 is going to give you how, yeah, but you can't assume that they're all the same, they're all equal to each other. Unless the problem says, hey, all the angles of a triangle are equal to each other. What kind of triangle do you have? You never get anything that easy. That would make life just predictable. But there is a problem in the homework. problem in the homework where they remind you that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees and then they tell you that triangle ABC has angles A and B with the same measure that means angle A and, and B will each be X degrees because you don't know And then angle C is 33 degrees bigger than each of A and B individually. So that C is 33 degrees bigger than either of these. Now, that's not the way I drew it, but it's the way the problem is, so you just have to take it. And so what you're going to have to do is add X plus X plus x plus 33, and you know that those add up to 180, and so then you would solve the equation. And you would find that, having already done it, that this is 49 degrees, and this is 49 degrees, and this is 82 degrees. And those should add up to 180 degrees. Yes?
probably the problem you work on might have slightly different numbers. Maybe C is 30 degrees bigger than the other two. And then each one would be more. Those do add up to 180, don't I mean, yeah. 180, yeah. So as long as we're dealing, oh, questions about this. You see, you will have a problem like that on the homework, and I just want you to be all set with the homework. Um, there is another problem that deals, well, there are several, actually, so we might as well deal with them while we're dealing with them. And these are angle facts. like a big X, right? But here in the problem, in the math problem, you're given that this angle is 4X plus 42 degrees, and this angle is 7X plus 6 degrees, and you're asked to find what is X and then what is each angle. And that's all the information you're given. But aha, there's a trick. And the trick is that whenever you draw an X, the angles opposite each other like that are equal. So it just so happens that these two angles are equal as well. So since these two angles are equal, all you have to do is say, well, okay then, 4x plus 42 is going to equal 7x plus 6. And then you just solve that equation for x, and you plug it into one of the angles because they're equal. So you just plug it into one. Why don't you do that and see what you get? It'll keep you off the streets. <laughs> You're going to have to make a decision where do you want your X's? Do you want them on the left or do you want them on the right? Doesn't matter, but you've got to, once you make your decision, there you go. x equals 12, you could stick it in either one you want. You could stick it in both. Hopefully, you get the same number because they're supposed to be equal. find out what x is. Okay, you can't know until you find out what x is. So first we're going to find out what x is. always end up going down too low and I don't mean to. This is where I left off and then I'll divide both sides by 3 and I'll get 12, right? So x equals 12. That's not the answer, but it helps. Because now that I have x equals 12, I can plug the 12 in there 
and then calculate the answer, or I can plug the 12 in there, and they better be equal because that's the way the whole problem was set up. All right, so if x is 12, then 4 times 12 is 48. 48 plus 42 is going to be 90. So both of these angles happen to be 90 degrees. That's not something that's always true. I mean, they don't just always equal 90 degrees. I mean, they could both equal 20 degrees if they were a little bitty. So the question in that problem will be, what is the angle? Let's see. Let me see exactly. Yeah, that's what I want to know. What, is, what are we answering? The exact question is, find the measure of the angles. Okay. So yeah, you're not going to have a little box to put x in, you have to put 12 in. Instead, you would be finding out what, the, what, the angle, yeah. what each angle is, and they would be the same. Okay, but again, there's that kind of insane idea that there is rotation going on. Notice we're not measuring it with a, with a measuring stick. We're not measuring it in inches or centimeters. We're assuming that there's a rotation going on and we're measuring in degrees. called opposite angles or vertical angles. And uh, in geometry, there's, you just learned that they're equal. Vertical angles are equal. Opposite angles are equal. If the teacher can hold it steady. There you go. Walking and chewing gum is also difficult. Mm -hmm. Angle problems in here. Here's one. There we are. Here we are. got a straight line, and you know how it got that way. It started out here and then rotated and we just say a straight line has 180 degrees. Now in the problem what you'll see is you've got this arrow, which technically is called a ray. But you've got that arrow going up there, and you're told that this side is 10x plus 3 degrees, and this side is 15x plus 2 degrees. And you're being asked, what are you being asked? Find the measure of each marked angle. Actually, I didn't see the marked. I mean, they're both there. So I guess that's marking. Um, these notes are in Blackboard, and so there are extra notes there for me explaining. But since you're here, I might as well just say and do it. Here, there is a trick, and that is since a straight line covers 180 degrees of rotation, they're telling you that this much rotation is 10x plus 3 degrees, and then this much rotation is 5x plus 2 degrees. How much are each of those angles? They're not going to be equal. And they're going to add up to 180 degrees so that your equation is going to be the two angles added together. And then you'll solve that you'll find out what x is. And when I did it, I found out that x is 7. So double check me, see if I'm right. 
blah, 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 blah. So x equals 7. Okay, now 7 is not the answer, right? 7 is just what <coughs> x equals. And now I put 7 in here. If x is 7, I'll have 10 times 7, which is 70, plus 3. So this will be 73 degrees. And then over here, that's 105 plus 2 is 107. So that one will be 107 degrees, <coughs> and if you add them together, they add up to 180. you need to know these are coming at you. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, no, never mind. <coughs> because like, like anything in life, if you know the tricks, you can say, oh, well, okay, I'll do this, this, and this, and done. Straight lines add up to 180 degrees. They're called supplementary. These two angles are called supplementary angles because supplementary, they're supplementary if they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, there, there are some other angles that have a special name and they're complementary. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So you have another problem So all supplementary is 180? All supplementary angles, all angles that are supplementary add up to 180 degrees. All angles that are complementary add up to 90 degrees. So there's another problem that's like that. Except it's something like x plus x plus 7 degrees. So x degrees and x plus 7 degrees and you're asked to find um, what are the two angles. And the fact that this is a 90 degree angle tells you that that plus that adds up to um, 90 degrees, yeah. So you would say x plus 7 plus x equals 90. You would solve for x, you'd get that one, and then you'd add 7 to it, you'd get that one. Or is just like a lesson? Like, it's like this. You're not going to get a whole bunch more geometry. In fact, we've probably gone over every formula that you need to know. Because if there were others, you would be given those formulas. Like, find the volume of a sphere. You don't have to know that. I used to know it. 
I don't know it anymore. Four thirds pi r cubed? I, I can't. Write it down. See if I'm right. Four thirds pi r cubed. I don't know. All right. Now, as I call your name, would you please take your stuff and go over to the computer lab and get to work on the homework? And as soon as I clean up in here, I'll be in there to help you. All right, so, see, Andrea already left. Carlos Alvarad, there you are. Rachel Bernstein, Rachel. Are you Rachel? Oh. And Brian Carr is here, we've already had, and I will look at that problem. Pardon me? See how smart you are. Ah, okay. And Leona was here. Oh, Leona was here earlier. Um, I teach exactly the same class where I cover exactly the same thing. Um, the hour before this class, the hour 15 minutes before this class. Sometimes if you have something to do, like take your child to the doctor or something during this time, you can always come earlier if you want to. It's the same class. All right, and Marilyn Castillo. Okay. And Otto Crow. Steve Dekaiser. All right. Notice I'm saying it right. D Kaiser, yeah. D well, almost right. Okay. Gwyneth Dorsey. Gwyneth. Yeah. If we have our own computer, can we just work on it? Or do you want us to oh. do No, but if, if you need help, you'll have to come get me. <laughs> Gwyneth, did you get my note? I, I emailed you yes. a note. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Macy Evans. <laughs> Kristen Hill. <laughs> Alamar Jackson. Rebecca Larson, Wade Pasley, did I say it right this time? Pasley? Not Pasley, Pasley. See, I thought you were a big name country singer. Leroy uh, is not here today, I know him. Kamala Rivero is. Alejandro is. Corey Smith. I knew it all along. Give me time. Don't judge me. Stephanie Valentin. 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 Teen. 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 Tyler Ferguson. All right. Who I didn't call. It's not on my math line. Get on my math lab, please. Why don't you go on over there and do it now? Don't procrastinate. Do the 17 day free trial. All right. Get something done. Um, what time does your class go this time? One, one, one. All right. Oh, that's so cute. I used to have one. Isn't that a cute one? I, um, I forgot to talk about it. Okay. Here. Take my notes and see if you can make some of my notes. Okay. And I'll be, oh, I'll, right. uh, yeah. I, I also have another question about one, but I want to get done with this. Okay. You're finding out if I need to go into the actual lab to do this? Did it register that I did? I forgot to look. Okay. Tyler. Yes. Right? Tyler. 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 <laughs> I am so tired, Tyler. T Teeler? Teeler, sure. <laughs> T 
So it's not mandatory, but needed, basically. Yes. And I would recommend not jumping over that. I'd jump over yeah. this before I jump over that. All right. Thank you. Oh, I'm heading out. I got to go. Whatever. Whatever. I'll send the SWAT team after. <laughs> See you. Someday I'm going to write a sitcom about the math SWAT team. 